Dave Chappelle has recently outed himself as a TERF. Dun, dun, dun. Yeah, a TERF is someone who believes that uh, the definition of woman is adult human female because he's a Nazi. Or a dictionary enthusiast. Or a dictionary enthusiast. Although saying that some dictionaries have been gotten to at this point. Uh. And so they don't have that as the uh, the definition of woman anymore. But um, I love I love Pink News' coverage of this, so I thought we'd use it. So-called comedian Dave Chappelle says he's team turf while defending J.K. Rowling. So-called. Again, of all the people, like so-called author J.K. Rowling. No, but also so-called <laughs> comedian. Know, what, is it, what does he only identify as a comedian? <laughs> yeah. Is that all he does? Oh, okay. Is there no essential characteristic about Dave Chappelle that makes him a comedian? Hmm. Really big think on that one. Uh, but uh, what I love about this is like, okay, well, who's Pink News to say that Dave Chappelle isn't a comedian? Like, what does he need to achieve to be a comedian in Pink News's eyes? You've got to believe in intersectionality. Tell jokes to an audience. Be popular with millions upon millions of people. Not necessarily to be a comedian. Well, I mean, I don't think so. But like, I think once you are really popular yeah. for doing stand up to millions and millions of people, then you can't not be a comedian. No, you have to be an intersectional philosopher and then you're a comedian. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> but again, it's defending themselves. defending J.K. Rowling, like literally the Voldemort of the intersectional movement, because she's like, yeah, maybe there's something biological about being a woman. It's like, yeah, I'm crazy. Welcome to the new world. But anyway, they say Chappelle is facing backlash for remarks he made about the LGBT community, declaring he's team turf in his new special, The Closer, which sounds like a really good watch now that they've said that. This also shouldn't be a surprise. No. Like, I remember watching his last special. He wasn't very intersectional. No. Mm. During the show, which uh, came out on Netflix, Chappelle addressed statements he'd made in the past, including about trans people. In one monologue, the comedian mused about the controversy surrounding J.K. Rowling before declaring he agreed with her, saying gender is a fact. Oof. And the turfs are just like, oh, and the, the social justice was just clutching their chest going, I can't believe that Chappelle has betrayed me like this. Every woman, uh, every human being in this room, every human being on Earth had to pass through the legs of a woman to be on Earth. That's a fact. Uh, he continued, now, I'm not saying, I'm not going, I'm not saying that to say trans women aren't women. I'm just saying that those uh, vaginas that they got, you know what I mean? Uh, I'm not saying it's not vagina, but it's beyond vagina or impossible vagina. It tastes like vagina, but it's not quite. What is it? Is it? Does it? I mean, I have no idea. I, my wife would kill me if I knew. So <laughs> even, like, I can't say I know. You can go and find out for me, though, if you want. I'd rather not. Field research. What's a neo-vagina taste like? Neo-vagina. That's what they're called. Right. Wait, actually? Yeah. You're kidding me? No. That's like, that's like Dave Chappelle came up with it, you know? Yeah, I know, but that's what they really call them. And so you can go and explore a neo-vagina for research purposes. I, I, I'll leave it to Leo. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, so anyway, he declared that he's a uh, team turf uh, and uh, declared that people who watch his specials would know that I've never had a problem with transgender people. And he seemingly drew the line between the black and queer communities, saying this problem has never been with LGBT plus people, but with white people, obviously, as a joke. Uh, if you listen to what I'm saying, clearly my problem has always been with white people, which is... I, I like I like like I get it's a joke, but at the same time, it is very telling of the intersectional logic. Yeah. No, don't worry. I'm I'm not uh, defecting. I still hate white people. It's exactly. Like, so so to be part of the left, you have to hate white people. Yeah. Okay. But it, it, I mean that's true. But it's obviously a joke. Yeah, yeah. But the joke's logic and, does have to intertwine with. And in Chappelle's defense, his his like comedic critiques of white Americans are hilarious. Like his white guy voice is the funniest thing in the world. I can't do it. Obviously, he's got a particular white guy voice, and it's just brilliant. Uh, anyway, uh, but Chappelle's jokes sparked criticism online with many many saying they felt more malicious than hilarious. Yes, the malicious jokes that destroyed your movement. There was How a lady at Labour Labor conference that denounced jokes. <laughs> of course they did. Yeah, she said, uh, what was it? Um, racial stereotypes, even in jest, are harmful to the person and the community and therefore should not be allowed. Based. Right. Uh, okay. <laughs> So, uh, yeah, I mean, you get people going, you know, the first thing I did today was not the new Chappelle episode, uh, special, and I've not been able to shake my annoyance ever since. I love the idea that you can watch Dave Chappelle's uh, comedy special and then be pissed off for a week, just walking around in a black mood. So what happened? I watched Dave Chappelle three days ago. I'm so annoyed. It's like, Turn it off. yeah, go outside, touch some grass. <laughs> everything else aside and it's hard to set aside i just have to believe that the, uh, by this point that even the most devoted Chappelle audience would love to hear material on something other than his obsession with trans bodies now i think people are enjoying it i, I don't think there's anything funnier yeah especially when you guys react this way to it but uh yeah and another person you know as a trans woman i've usually defended dave Chappelle's specials because i think they're hilarious and his jokes on trans women never felt intentionally malicious the closer changed my mind on that the special felt so lazy and disingenuous i'm really disappointed wow 
Dave Chappelle's crying into his mansion of millions. Uh, <laughs> uh, no, I didn't disappoint Taylor Ashbrook, did I? Oh, no. Yeah. <laughs> God. <laughs> Not this clearly same person on Twitter who got 165 likes. Anyway, uh, so elsewhere in the closer, Chappelle said he'd uh, like to negotiate the release of Da Baby. We covered Da Baby. He, oh yeah. He he said that his gay fans weren't degenerates, and everyone was like, "You hate gay people." I was like what? What? Yeah, <laughs> exactly. What are you saying about gay people? Uh, well, that's that's pretty much the response, really. Yeah. Uh, and uh, he yeah, so he wants to negotiate the release of him uh, because he was cancelled, obviously. And uh, he ends on this really amazing point, right? He says that uh, a lot of the LGBT community doesn't know that DeBaby's history, he once shot a black person and killed him. He said nothing bad happened to his career after this incident before quipping that the public appeared more offended by DeBaby's anti-LGBT plus statements than the killing of a black man. You see where I'm going with this? In our country, you can shoot and kill a black person, but you better not hurt gay person's feelings. No. You can also be transgender and run someone over in your car ah. and get away with it. So, But that's the point, isn't it? The, the feelings of the gay community is more important than the life of a black man. I love how this stack is asserting itself as well. Mm. The progressive stack. Blacks, you're lower down than the gays. The gays aren't very oppressed. <laughs> mm. hmm. Anyway, just to, just to finish this off, just because uh, we happen to be framing this in the language of defending J.K. Rowling. Uh, there, there was this one amusing story that I found on uh, Pink News, because I don't know why I follow Pink News on Facebook, but I do, and I get all of the... Oh, come on, we know why. Okay, yeah. Because uh, every headline's amazing. It is, yeah. And and so there was this one trans woman who was uh, born a year before Harry Potter came out, and the, as a boy, and their name was Harry Potter. And then the next year, Harry Potter comes out, and suddenly her entire oh. life, or his entire life, which, whichever it was at the time, uh, is essentially like molded by J.K. Rowling. And that was all fine until they transitioned and then J.K. Rowling came out as a turf. And they were like, well, how could you do this to me? And so they've changed their name to Ellen. Hang on, wait. But that would require that they were identifying as a man, calling themselves Harry Potter and being like, mm-hmm. Lamau, isn't that funny? Mm-hmm. And then they transitioned, they kept the Harry Potter. Yeah. I'm still Harry, but yep. I'm a woman. Yep. And then only now. And then J.K. Rowling's like, actually, women's adult human female. And they're like, oh, you've betrayed me. Another stab in the back. Call me Ellen. Yeah. And then, uh, exactly. And the uh, timeline doesn't make sense. Yeah. Um, but the thing is, <laughs> this is like, this, this, like, I don't know what to say about this, but it's like, I had a very loose connection with the name because of the character. It never truly felt like my name to begin with. And instead felt like a wizard people associated with me. So I reckon I have far less intense name dysphoria than most trans people. The only part that especially bothers me is that I'll never be able to truly move on or forget my dead name because it's everywhere. Like, I guess. The, the struggle is real. Joanne was a childhood idol of mine. And then she became a turf. So anyway. Turfs are everywhere. You've got to watch out for them, mate. Under the bed. Like Nazis. If you enjoyed that segment from the podcast, The Lotus Eaters, you can catch the full podcast at 1pm every weekday UK time at lotuseaters.com. You can also sign up at lotuseaters.com to get access to all the premium content we have on the site. Yeah, that's how we keep this whole operation running. And recently we've put up loads of great stuff, such as this interview with legendary comedian Steve Hughes, one of my personal favourite comedians, so it was a real honour to be able to meet him. But what one thing that I didn't expect, that he would be such a deep thinker, and this, honestly, this podcast is genuinely, like a meeting of minds in a way. He was right on my wavelength on a bunch of things and helped me actually connect a bunch of dots, but I'm not going to carry on and spoil it. Uh, we also, of course, have lots of interesting articles that have been written, uh, such as this one by Josh about the dumbest country on earth. And for premium, uh, for silver tier subscribers, uh, we also include a link. So it's uh, we have an audio reading of it from a chap called Jonathan, who has a very smooth voice that uh, you will enjoy. And this is great because often I don't have time to read all of the articles we put up because we've put up a lot of regular content. And so this saves me the hassle of having to read it myself. So I really actually am very appreciative of this feature on a personal level. But uh, we also do the contemplations and epochs, which are just interesting podcasts about interesting things. These are regular weekly podcasts. So this one is uh, one of our writers, Josh, who's a very, he's got a master's degree in psychology, talking about theories of intelligence and how they matter. And uh, of course, we've got the epochs where we, myself and Bo, or in this case, it was Josh and Bo, talking about the life of Sir Francis Drake. So that's two solid hours uh, talking about England's most notorious adventurer. Uh, but we've also got lots and lots of other ones. This is number 21. So there's a, a 
good back catalogue there. And finally, we have our book clubs, and this is the part that I'm most proud of. Uh, recently, we've done uh, Shooting an Elephant by George Orwell. And, and Reflections on a Ravaged Century by Robert Conquest. Yeah, Robert Conquest is fantastic. Just, if you want Western chauvinist historian, he's your man. Anti-socialism. Yes, <laughs> in, in, in all forms, it's fantastic. Uh, so yeah, and yeah. like I said, that's what keeps the podcast running. So if you want to become a member, thank you very much, and we think there's some great stuff you'll enjoy.